Yes. Hi everyone, I'm Megan and I'm here to teach you today some wood burning basics. So um, I'm teaching classes on Thursdays and Fridays, all of February and all of March. So if you enjoy this one or wanna try out a couple of different hobbies or just watch some videos and just check out some new projects to try, we would love to have you join us. So today's the day for wood burning. And if you've never wood burned before, it is a really good hobby to get into. I don't think it takes um, intense training to become a really good at wood burning. I think it just takes if you can trace, I like to say, if you can trace, you can wood burn. If you can draw with a pencil or if you can write something or trace something with a pencil, you can wood burn. Wood burning is basically just a really cool tool that helps you to turn drawings onto wood in the form of burning that wood. So it's fun. It's got a good camp smell to it. It makes me think of campfires. So I always enjoy wood burning. I think we'll go ahead and switch over to the other... Uh, camera and you can see some of the tools I already have going. So this is the wood burning tool and it has this plastic part at the bottom and then it obviously has the metal at the top and it comes with a stand and I usually take this stand down so that it doesn't move on me and then it's also going to have a switch. So if you are wood burning along with me I would love to see what you're up to but if you are wood burning with me now is the time to go ahead and turn that switch on so that we can let our wood burner start to heat up so that we can be ready to go ahead and do our project. So my wood burner is heating up. It usually takes about one or two minutes. Um, this is a really cool, there's different kinds, but this is a really cool, easy way to start. It's usually only about $15 to get a wood burner like this and get you started on this new hobby. And then if you like it, you can dive in even further with some other ones. So the tip that I'll be using today is called the flow tip. Some of the different wood burners come with multiple tips. So there are some of these tips that's kind of more like a calligraphy sort of point that has that sharp edge to it or a really fine, fine point that's kind of more like a very sharp pencil. But the tool, um, the tip that we're gonna be using today is called the flow tip and it's rounded and it makes for really nice lines um, and just really good basic wood burning design. So I highly recommend that. You might notice that I have this ceramic cup and I have these pliers. If I were to change the tips out of this tool, I would definitely want to make sure that I was using the pliers. You do not want to touch the tip of this wood burner as soon as it's heating up because it will burn you. But you can switch out the tips just by twisting these in and out of the end of your wood burning tool. And in fact, you don't even have to unplug the tool while you're twisting the tips in and out. You can easily just keep going back and forth as long as you have somewhere like the ceramic bowl in order to keep all of those hot tips and let them kind of cool down in this bowl. So I do want to point out that if you happen to make one of these projects with us, I would love for you to tag us at Learn With Michaels. Or um, my own personal Instagram is 4M Coleman, so you're welcome to share pictures with me. Or if you just want to follow either of those two accounts so that you can kind of keep track of what some of the upcoming projects are, that would be awesome. And feel free to tag us or use our hashtag so that we can check out whatever it is that you're making at home. So today with our wood burning basics, we're going to go through and we're going to learn a little bit about how to wood burn. And then we're going to make some sort of finished project. So your finished project could be a frame, your finished project could be just a tile. I'm gonna show you some of the other things that I've been up to too. So we have really beautiful wood slices at Michael's that you can grab and you can do this. Um, this particular wood slice, I already have a class on this and Felicia might be able to drop that in the chat for us so that you can see it. And on the other side, I'll show you that I did the exact same thing and then later went back and added acrylic paint to do kind of like a paint by number. So both have their own special qualities. This is obviously a more rustic kind of look and this is more a cheery festive kind of look to it, but both are pretty cool. We'll have some more wood burning classes coming up. Um, in spring, we can do some wood burning getting ready for Easter. I also enjoy doing some Celtic wood burning to get myself ready for St. Patrick's Day. So there's lots of different ways that you can wood burn. And of course, when it comes towards the Christmas and winter season, 
who doesn't like wood burning on these wood slices. So I highly recommend um, picking up this hobby. It's very fun. It's very easy and it's pretty fast to get to. So there are templates that go along with this class. So there's a love is in the air template. There's also one that has the dandelion. And I think there's one more that has some little flowers on it also. So you're welcome to use any of those or you can freehand and do your own design. And I'll show you how to do kind of both of those sorts of things. So if you have questions, please let me know um, in the chat. And Felicia will definitely hook you up with those handouts and templates. If you don't have a chance to print them right now, that's okay. You can always come back and watch this video later. But we are gonna start out with some of the basics. So the way that you're gonna hold your wood burning tool is going to mostly be using your thumb and your finger. It's not quite the same as a pen, but it's pretty darn close. And I always wanna keep this cord um, loose so that there's space for me to move around and not feel like it's pulling it off of the back of my table. You do wanna have um, something to put a hot wood burner onto. So if you have one of these little holders, that would be perfect. And you wanna have a nice surface that's not going to um, be dangerous for wood burning on also. I highly recommend wood burning outside or in a garage that's pretty ventilated. I'm doing it in a room today and I have windows and I have a fan going just to kind of keep campfire smell from setting off my alarms. <laughs> so we'll see if we can get through this whole class without setting off my fire alarm. That'll be the test. So I'm holding this wood burner in my hand with these fingers. And the first thing is I'm gonna take like a practice slice of wood. And so on the supply list for today's class, I put some of these different wooden shapes that you can get in the kids section of Michael's or you can get it in the unfinished wood section of Michael's. And we're just gonna play around with these to kind of show you some different techniques. So the first thing I want you to try is making a dot. So obviously, if you hold the dot down for a long time, you're gonna get a dark, large circle. If you hold it down for a little bit, or if you hold it down even less, or even less, or even less. So I want you to try and play with making different size dots by either leaving the wood burning tool on longer or shorter, or messing with your different pressure, how much pressure you're putting each time and decrease in your pressure as you go across to kind of give you several different types of lines or several different types of burns. So right now we're just doing dots and do a longer, deeper dot and then do less and less and see if you can kind of gradiate down to having even less. You can tell that the longer you hold the wood burning tool on, the darker the marks are gonna be and obviously the wider. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make some straight lines. So when you're making a straight line with your wood burning tool, you'll notice that I'm trying to keep the same pressure and I'm trying to let the tool do its work. So it's kind of like slicing through butter or melting like butter. If you have a good wooden surface and you have a good wood burning tool, you really just have to drag it across and let it do the work in order to get that nice long burn. So if you're practicing along with me, go ahead and try again, just making one line and trying to keep it as steady and as smooth as you can. You might notice some uh, smoke coming up and that is totally normal. Nothing is on fire, it is just burning it in. So it's not actively in flames, it's just giving you that smoke, letting you know that it was burnt. So you can make some different slashes, make some different lines. And then once you've moved on from your slower or from your uh, straight lines, you might wanna try and use a curve. So when you're doing a curve, it's a little harder to keep the same pressure and keep that slow and steady pace. But if you can keep that slow and steady pace, you can keep a nice even burn. Now I'm gonna mess up a couple of things on purpose to show you some normal um, beginner issues. So if I do my line, 
And it ends up like this, where parts of it are darker and parts of it are longer or lighter. What that means is that I just wasn't patient enough to just move at an even slower pace. And if I would just move even slower, I could keep a more even coloring going across. So if you rush, you might get some spots that are lighter because the tip of your tool hasn't touched the wood very long in those middle spots because you were going so fast. Another thing that often happens is something like this, where you might end up with dots on both ends. And what's happening with the dots on both ends is that if you hesitate or stay in one spot too long and then move, and then stay in one spot too long and then move, what you're doing is you're causing those darker burns because the tip of the wood burning tool is landing in those spots a lot longer. So that's another thing to keep track of. So once you feel pretty good with your techniques, you've done some different dots, you've done some different lines, and hopefully you've tried a couple of curves or squiggles also, just slow and steady is always going to win. And if you have a space, like I did this on purpose right here where it gets a little bit lighter at the end. That's an easy fix because you can just go back and go in those same spots and go over it again in order to even out the color. So let me know in the chat if you are wood burning along with me, if you have any questions or any things that you want to check out or ask me questions about, that would be awesome. I also put in the shopping guide for today, um, some transfer paper. And I'm gonna show you how that transfer paper can really help you to make a cool design. If you don't feel very confident about your drawing skills or you creating your own picture from scratch, then absolutely go ahead and use some sort of template. It can literally be a coloring book. It can be something that you print out. It can be something that you draw. And then we're gonna use the transfer paper in order to transfer it over. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a smaller wood um, surface right now. And then towards the end of the class, I'm gonna move on into the frame. So maybe I wanna pick something, I'm still kind of in a Valentine mood and maybe I wanna pick something like the love is in the air. So if you have some sort of template like I do, and again, Felicia put these into the chat, and I want this phrase to kind of be transferred onto this wooden surface. With your transfer pa paper, you're going to want, there's a darker side and there's a more lighter side or matte side. You want the shiny darkest side to face the wood surface. And then you're gonna try and find a good place Good placement for your word. I'm kind of feeling the edges of the sides of this. So I think I see in the chat, someone was talking about the tip of their wood burning tool getting stuck in the groove. So the better quality of wood you're burning on, the less it will get caught. And also using this flow tip and using, instead of using something like this tip, is really also going to help you because this rounded tip is going to help you go over those cracks or go over those parts in the piece of wood that might be a little bit more challenging. So I have the shiny side of my paper, of my transfer paper, the darkest side facing the wood, and then I have my piece figured out. This is about where I want it. So notice me using the depressions of this. So there are two different kinds of tips. Um, there's another tip that kind of looks like the one I have, but it has even more of a pronounced point on it. And so again, I think this flow tip is gonna be even easier than this really tiny tip also. So I think that might help. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this transfer paper and I'm tracing the little sentiment that I have And I'm using a pencil and I'm not giving super heavy pressure. It's kind of light to medium. And you can do as much of this design or as little of the design match and mingle if you want. 
And you don't need to do the whole thickness of the letters because you're going to do that thickness when you go back with your tool. You really just wanna get the basic idea of where the letters go and how they're spaced to give you that head start for your wood burning project. So you can print out any kind of sentiment you want to and use the same technique. And then you have a little bit of that transferred on. If I used even darker pressure or harder pressure, I would have gotten a darker picture, but this is actually plenty for me to be able to see what I'm doing in order to burn this. So at this point, my wood burning tool has been heating up and we have used it at least once. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do one go through of the letters. I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm just kind of give, going once over to give me the placement, to give me where they are, what they look like. And then I'm definitely going to go back and make these even more the way that I want them to be. So sometimes I don't love looking at my own handwriting, so it's nice to copy someone else's or nice to use some kind of font. So I recommend using this transfer paper in order to help you get that design directly onto your wooden surface. And because it is graphite transfer paper, theoretically you should be able to erase it just like you would the graphite of a pencil. Now it sometimes is difficult to erase with a pencil eraser. Um, you might need to sand it down if you get stray marks that you don't want in your final design. So be careful with that. That's why I usually go with lighter pressure and just having a basic outline. And I'm doing a once over, kind of following the lines, showing the basic outlines. And then you'll see how I can kind of go back and improve this once I get it mapped out. So for any of the projects that I've already shown you, this is usually what I do, is I go through and do it once, and you'll say, mm, that's fine, but that's not really impressive, Megan. Um, that's like a small child may have made that, and that would be fine, <laughs> but I'm going to go back and I'm going to spend some more time on it in order to make it look even more polished. So then I'm going back and I'm trying to keep the color and the thickness of my lines more even. And I'm going to be able to keep the letters um, similar in thickness throughout. So I'm spending a little bit more time in each one of these places. I've already kind of created this divot and I'm going back. And if you feel like you're getting stuck in too many divots, and you'll see here I have dots and dots, remember that a bunch of dots put together will still end up giving you that finished project of a straight line. So if you want to just dot instead of dragging a line, that's still going to end up with a really nice end result. So I'm going back through each one of these letters and spending a little more time. And if I wanted to or thought I needed to use a finer, sharper, um, smaller tip, I could go back and change one of the tips using my pliers. But I still feel like my flow tip is going pretty well. And I'm happy with what it's doing. So this first technique I'm showing you is using that transfer paper in order to kind of transfer a design. And like I said, if you can trace you can wood burn. So it is just like using a pencil or using a marker, but it's just a little bit more dangerous <laughs> because it is hot and it is burning this wood. And it's doing something really cool to make a really interesting, fun design. So if anyone is joining us, um, and crafting along with me, let me know what kind of pattern you're going for. If you're doing a romantic pattern like the one I have right now, or if you're going more for a spring pattern or 
wishing for winter to go away, something like that. Speaking of winter going away, I do want to tell you about a class that I'm going to be teaching next week is how to make a chunky hand knit blanket. So if you're still feeling the chill, if winter hasn't left you yet, you might need a blanket. So I can teach you how to make those next week. Tomorrow, I'm going to be teaching a class on how to make a perfect planter using some faux succulents. So if you've ever wanted to dabble in floral arranging, you can join me tomorrow and we can do that. But really every Thursday and Friday, we try to pick up a different craft and dabble and see how it goes. So at this point, I'm gonna go back with my hearts and I'm gonna go ahead and shade them all the way in. So I'm just leaving the tip and letting it do the work and filling in that blank space with a really nice solid burn. You can kind of see the grooves and the divots in what I just did. I'm gonna do that again for the other two hearts. So what I did in order to create this first piece that I'm working on, and basically what you do for any of these kind of wood burning projects that I've shown you before is find a solid surface. Now the solid wooden surface cannot have any paint on it already or else you're definitely going to create some toxic fumes when you're heating it up. So you want it to be an unfinished wooden surface. The smoother, the better. So it can be a slice of wood or it can be um, a cut piece of plywood. It can be a natural slice from an actual um, tree. It can be lots of different kinds of surfaces. Here's another one. We sell a lot of cool wooden little things to put on shelves at Michael's. So this was like a gingerbread that happened this Christmas. But just go back with your wood burner and just burn on some extra designs. And that's just one more way of of creating using these wooden surfaces. So there's always something fun to do with those. And once you're done with these, you can add color, you can add paint, or you can just leave it as is. So you can already kind of tell the difference between the parts that I've gone over again and the parts that I haven't. And you can see how if I take a little bit more time on this project, I can really make it something that I'm proud of. I'm curious if anybody watching has ever tried this before. And let me know if you found it to be easy or difficult or somewhere in between. Thickness of a broomstick. Ooh. So someone is saying in the chat that they were thinking about burning onto like wooden sticks that are about the thickness of a um, broomstick. That's cool. And that's definitely gonna take some time and patience because you can imagine in order to actually burn something that solid or that dense, it's just gonna take a little bit of time, but it will use the exact same technique. Also, if anyone's into sororities and fraternities, <laughs> that you can make some really cool plaques, some really cool um, wooden paddles and different things like that too. Someone said that they did a lot of wood burning in Girl Scouts and even got a badge for it. Now that is awesome, I love that. I just wanna show you if I can find a pen nearby. Um, something I like to do with these two is sometimes add a little pop of color. So I'm just finding a Crayola marker and these Crayola markers just do so well with this wood because they kind of make it almost seem watercolor-like. So it's fun to kind of add some extra color and then still have the divot where the wood burning is, but have some extra color in it too. So that might be something that you might wanna add just for fun, some stripes or some extra color to make it pop even more. So this first one that I that I did, we use the transfer paper technique. You can. Now I have seen some really amazing wood burners in my day. 
So people who are very good with drawing just with normal pencil can make the most amazing wood burning pieces you've ever seen because they can go back in and they can add shading. So if you're working on something and you really get the hang of this wood burning tool and you kind of start learning how to use different thicknesses of the line, different colors of the line from different kinds of burns, you can definitely get some really cool things in here. Now, once I add anything to the top of my unfinished surface, I probably don't want to go back and burn into it. So if I were to do this crayon or this, not crayon, sorry, this marker, it's usually a pop of color at the end instead of in the middle because I don't want to go ahead and burn over something just in case, even if it is not toxic. So I have seen some wooden spoon handles that get decorated and I love the way that those look. A good way to personalize something, maybe if you're going to a wedding and you want to give the bride and the groom something personal, I love those kinds of gifts. I think that's really cool. So right now I'm opening up a wooden frame. These are pretty readily available at Michael's and they're usually a pretty low price point. So a great way to get started. And there are these wooden frames. And this one that I created was all freehand. So we have a little bit more time that I'm just gonna kind of show you another technique of wood burning besides the transfer. So if you want to do something a lot more organic or a lot more um, doodle kind of patterns or just really um, meditative kind of feel to it, then what I recommend is starting somewhere and it really doesn't matter where you start, but start somewhere with some kind of line and go from edge to edge. So I did that one line right there. And then the trick to kind of creating these patterns is to use parallels. So once you lay down one line, make a couple more in that same kind of wave, and then go in a different direction and add down some more lines in another direction. So since I have this one right here, then maybe I want to add a couple of parallel lines as best I can, just trying to match that same curve or that same pattern. And I might do a couple of those. And then I want to switch up directions completely. So maybe I come down to this corner and do some of these almost like rainbow curves. And then put lines that are parallel to all of those. And just kind of keep picking out different lines going in different directions and keep mirroring those lines in order to create these really fun kind of organic patterns and waves. So if I had something going kind of horizontally, then I'd switch it up and try and make the next part next to it a little bit more vertical, just in order to fill that space and keep this pattern interesting. So the first technique I showed you was using this transfer paper, but you can just completely freehand something. You can do dots, you can do letters, you can start writing something, or you can do like what I'm doing, which is just a glorified doodle being burned into this wood using this flow tip. You know, Megan, burner. as yeah. you're talking, my thought process would, um, if, or a good idea for someone is if they had um, old recipes, they want to um, burn them into wood and give them as gifts. I love that. I love that. Or if you have somebody's handwriting and you want it to make some sort of meaningful gift, you can print out their handwriting print out something and then use the transfer paper and kind of use their signature, use their name. I love that idea. Or those wow, is recipes, great. like you were saying, I think that would be really fun to hand down and give. I could picture having a frame with somebody's writing kind of on it and then a nice, really nice photo of them to give to someone. I think that those are all great ideas. So I'm keeping this slow and steady, and I'm trying to keep the same pressure as I go. The surface that I'm working on is um, kind of like Formica. 
I guess. So I'm not burning onto a wood table. I'm not burning on top of a piece of paper. Outside, I like to do it on cement or I like to do it on, um, yeah, mostly cement or on the concrete on my back patio. But any of those are going to work. As long as you don't hold your tool down on the surface, even if you don't have a nicer surface, it would be okay. Just be careful not to accidentally lay your tip onto anything plastic. That could be disastrous. But thank you for participating in the chat and asking me these questions. That's awesome. There are different kinds of wood and the way the different woods burn. You can imagine if it was a more natural piece of wood, it would have a lot more grooves to it. So you might get stuck in some different ways. And you might get more of those jumps in your design. And so you just have to kind of go with whatever wood you have and adapt to it as you get going. Let me know if you have any more questions. I could switch to another tip if we wanted to, but I really love this tip and I could just wood burn using this tip all day because it is my favorite. Cool. And I've said before, I just love that it feels like you're gliding across. And if you're doing it with the right kind of pressure and the right kind of wood, it just feels kind of like slicing a warm knife through butter. And that's a good feeling. And the smells I'm getting in my room are campfire, which always have good memories for me. Talk about Girl Scouts. <laughs> I think wood burning in Girl Scouts is awesome. The powerful art and craft. So there is an art of wood burning called pyrography, like py py pyro and then graphy is the art of burning wood. And if you use that hashtag and look on Instagram, you're going to see some of the most amazing pieces of art that it's hard to tell that they were burned into wood and not actually drawn. So the chisel tip, um, if you've ever done calligraphy, you've seen these chisel tips for old school calligraphy pens. So it works kind of the same way where you can give yourself a really broad letter or you can turn it another degree and you can use one of the fine tips and get something very, very um, specific. So the... <laughs> the the pyrography is P Y R O G R A P H Y. And if you plug that into Instagram as a hashtag, you're going to see some really cool things. So definitely it's kind of like tattooing too. So if you get some really cool tattoo sorts of patterns, those tattoo patterns usually end up burning very well also, because it's that same idea of using some sort of tool and burning into a very interesting surface. The interesting surface just might happen to be your skin if you're doing a tattoo. Do not wood burn on your skin. I do not recommend that. <laughs> so I'm gonna do just a little bit more and please go ahead and ask me more questions. It says. Megan, there's a question asking, is there any type of wood that should not be used? Great question. So anything that's been chemically treated already is a bad idea. Um, anything that's painted is a bad idea. There are some woods like balsa. Um, the thinner the wood is, the, the more spread you'll get, if that makes any sense. Kind of like, you know how you put a Sharpie down and sometimes it kind of bleeds. Um, with some of the woods, it'll do that same thing. And then with a thicker like pine wood or something like basswood, It'll just take a little bit longer to burn, but it'll be a really, really nice burn. So better quality wood will give you better quality. Um, and then the other one is like, you don't wanna use fresh wood because you can imagine again, if it's that green kind of sapling wood, it's gonna smell terrible when you wood burn it. So different woods are gonna have different smells too. And it depends on what you like or don't like, that's gonna help you with that too. 
So what I'm doing just to finish up this last side over here is I'm just picking out some lines and I'm just continuing to mirror them. So once I kind of pick up on a new curve or a new straight line, then I'll just do a couple of them using that same kind of pattern and fill that space as I go. And once you have this done, if I wanted to, I could go back and I could color this in using the Crayolas or I could color it in using paint. So I had shown before that this is some of that acrylic paint going back and doing some fill in with acrylic paint, or you might just want that rustic look and you might wanna just leave it as it is and be happy with your wood burned finished surface. So I think this is as far as I'm gonna take this one but I'd love for you to share any pictures of anything you might have made during class today, or if you've used any of these templates to make anything cool. These wooden slices, um, you can get a lot of them per pack at Michael's, and then you could theoretically put these all together to make a garland. So if you wanna use stencils, if you want to, Instead of using the transfer paper, you could also use stencils and you could make some bees, you, some, you could make some honeycomb, and you can make a garland going across and then kind of stapling them onto some twine once you get some letters that you really like. So this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope to see you again soon. Enjoy your wood burning. Did I miss something, Megan? Yep, we're signing off. Thanks right. for coming, everyone. We appreciate it. Thank you. It. Bye.